Welcome to the Family Law Channel. I'm Scott Drake with my guest, uh, retired Superior Court Judge in Santa Clara, California, Eugene M. Hyman. And we're talking about child support today. In a divorce case, child support is usually an issue that comes up. Many sometimes ask, well, what are legitimate expenses that can be paid by child support? Judge Hyman, welcome. Thank you. Well, let's talk about that. Typically, in your experience, what are legitimate expenses when we're talking about child support? Well, it's pretty broad. Um, it, for uh, rent, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. uh, for babysitting, obviously food, clothing, um, medical expenses, um, uh, for entertainment. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's it's very broad, and, and one of the components uh, is obviously the child has to have a roof over his or her head, mm -hmm. and at the same time, obviously, the mother is having a roof over his or her head. So uh, there's a concern sometimes that the uh, child support payment is being used uh, for rent or something like that in excess of its reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is that the, the child is going to have to have um, a place to live, mm -hmm. and that usually is going to be paying a part of having the primary custodial parent uh, in terms of their rent as well. And mm -hmm. there's just no way to divide that up the right. way a lot of uh, parents would like to divide it up. Uh, so some people probably watching right now probably think uh, entertainment and extracurricular activities fall outside what would be considered a legitimate expense, but oftentimes that's that's included in there. I think one case we talked about recently was Linda Evangelista, the, 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 the supermodel, and getting child right. support from a, a wealthy ex-husband who was, I think, a billionaire. Right. Uh, and and then right. she had all these other concerns, which was w when she's traveling, she has to have security, right. and she has to have somebody she's working all day long, and these there there are some, there are some expenses that, that would seem not legitimate, but actually are. Correct. Obviously, it depends upon the circumstances. Right. I mean, your average uh, American isn't going to have those kinds of concerns. Sure. But let's say that your your child is uh, in the Boy Scouts or a choir or goes to church or something like that. Well, they need transportation. Part mm -hmm. of that's going to be you know, car, gas, insurance, maintenance. That's all reasonable. Uh, if you run uh, finally into a situation where one uh, parent really disputes the cost, is is there any any uh, thing that you can do to help that other than making the decision yourself, but allowing someone else to do it? Uh, sure. What well, in the extreme situation, the parties can perhaps agree uh, in terms of who would uh, sort of be a guardian over the the the, the money over the child support. And then one parent would go to that person in order to get reimbursed for certain kinds of things or for an allowance. In other words, the, the primary payer puts this money sort of in trust, and then the person will micromanage uh, the paying of bills related to, to the child support. Um, but this is extreme. I mean, while the accusation is frequently made, uh, the evidence to support the necessity of that is uh, more often than not extremely lacking. Mm -hmm. But hypothetically, if that's the situation and if it's proven to the satisfaction of a judge that this is necessary, then that can in fact be done. Well, once again, we also probably can highlight too that uh, the uh, these things vary state by state. Maybe not greatly, but uh, you, you need to check with what's common in your own state. Judges, we always, uh, as we always like to say, thank you so much for lending your judicial expertise and uh, educating all of us here. Thank you. And you're watching the Family Law Channel.